The Let Kashmir Decide movement is bringing to you a brand new show on JKTV where you will get the latest updates and analysis into the situation in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Modi and the Indian government want the world to believe that all is well in Indian-occupied Kashmir, but that is decidedly not the case. Join us and different guests every Thursday for insight into the latest developments in the Kashmiri freedom struggle. Good evening. Thank you for joining us here again. My name is Claire Bidwell. I'm a primary school teacher and a human rights activist living in Scotland. Each week, um, me and Mary Scully are here to discuss the latest events or ongoing um, current things that are happening within the Kashmiri freedom struggle within Indian occupied Kashmir. Um, good evening to you, Mary. How are you? Um, and Mary, sorry, I should have said is in the USA as uh, she's a political writer and a human rights activist also. And I have pulled up on screen there, uh, Turgay Evren as well. He's our guest with us this week. Turgay is from Turkey. He is an author. He's a music writer and composer and a songwriter and teaches English as second language. And I've probably missed something else out as well. Very much a human rights activist within his work as well. So we're looking forward to talking with Turgay tonight. Um, Mary, how are you? I'm good, I'm very good. Good, um, and so it's lovely to see you again and to be back here. Now, things have been quite busy ongoing in Indian occupied Kashmir of late, haven't they? We've been concerned and looking at the, um, it, the way the Indian government are treating with the press and the army have closed down um, the press office there, the main press office, and are gaining a control of the narrative. And um, we've watched the human rights defenders be arrested and everything. So we're still very much having to up our campaign and the things that we're doing. So, Mary, I'm going to pass it over to you to discuss with Turgai because we're really aware of how important creativity, um, the arts, as a way of sharing information, as a way of uh, fighting for humanity and, and able to put, isn't it, into pictures and words, the emotions and the feelings and for a different way for people to understand in a way that words can't always say through the pictures or the way they're said touches that emotion. So I'm looking forward to hearing um, Turgai's story and, and the influences that his work has had. So over to you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Turgai. Um, we want to um, uh, discuss with you uh, your Kashmiri music and your views on what's going on in Kashmir. Um, but we first would like to know something about you. You're kind of a Renaissance man. You're a songwriter, a composer, a, uh, a teacher, a poet, and a teacher of English as a second language. So what we would like to know is uh, about your background, how you became a political person, how you were politicized to the struggles of the oppressed, and um, just something about who you yeah. are. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I'd like uh, to thank you and Clay for having me in this program. Uh, I really feel honored to, to become a part of you know, this program and to discuss the latest developments, you know, happening in Indian occupied Kashmir. So uh, to give some brief information about myself, I mean, uh, I was born in the eastern part of uh, Turkey in a major city called Diyarbakir. It is also a historical city. It is like an, you know, kind of open, you know, museum. It's something like an open, open museum. Uh, and then I studied English language teaching at university in the northern part of Turkey, we call Black Sea, again in a major city, in the biggest city of Black Sea, Samsun. And I became an English teacher. So first I was in Ankara, then I came to Istanbul, you know, uh, and then I also went, I also worked in uh, Toronto and Montreal as an e English teacher. Then I worked at universities in language uh, schools, and of uh, and of course I also wrote several English story books, mainly for teaching English. 
And actually, the first time, like maybe 10, 11 years ago, I started writing, you know, some songs, some rap songs for teaching English. And I collaborated with an American teacher called Jason R. Levin. So they also call him Fluency MC. So, you know, we met on Facebook and we started, you know, creating some works together. I wrote the lyrics and then he started rapping, but it was not kind of very fast rap. It was kind of slow. And our purpose was to teach English to the masses. And really that, that became very effective. And in many countries, they started using do, those songs for teaching purposes, you know? So uh, imagine that in one song, we tried to teach present continuous sense. In another song, maybe ability can. So it was an innovative approach to teaching English. And some of our works became very popular in, in YouTube. So when it comes to political songs, my first song, you know, came uh, about in 2016 when there were millions of refu Syrian refugees in Turkey. And unfortunately, Europe, you know, uh, did not care much about, you know, those Syrian refugees. And many of them wanted, you know, to immigrate to, to Europe, but there were some strict you know, prevention measures and even some people drowned in the sea because they were trying, you know, pass the sea uh, sometimes, you know, in a, in a kind of boat. And of course, I became so upset, you know, about Syrian refugee kids. Uh, and then I, I wrote an English song because I wanted to bring attention to the Syrian refugee kids. So uh, that song, Today I Will Not Die, it was really a very strong song and it made a lot of emotional impact. So that time, even it has reached President Erdogan because it became you know, so viral. And then uh, President Erdogan shared the song first with world children and then some world leaders would visit you know, Turkey and just he wanted, I think, to, to tell the suffering of Syrian refugees through a song. So he thought, you know, maybe a song would communicate better than some verse. And of course, we were kind of surprised at the success of that song. Suddenly the song has reached some world leaders, you know, visiting Turkey. And of course, after that song, I kept on writing songs because that song also became a part of some donation campaigns as well. And I saw that a song can actually achieve so many things, you know, because in Turkey, many famous singers started using that song in, an, uh, in, a, in a kind of, you know, aid campaign for Syrian refugees. And I really felt, you know, very honored by the success of that song. And after that, I wrote about, uh, you know, I wrote another song about African mothers. So in some African countries, unfortunately, mothers are watching their children, you know, die from hunger. So tell me, my pretty mother, tell me, my pretty mother, why do kids die from hunger? So again, the question came from the language of, from the mouth of a child, a, a kid asking, you know, uh, his mother or her, her mother, why do kids die from hunger? So that song also became really very, uh, very kind of powerful in Turkey. And there were a lot of news, you know, going on that song. And then I wrote about Yemen. So how can we carry your burden, Yemen? Because the psychological burden of Yemen is too difficult to carry in our hearts as a human being. I mean, every single day, I mean, just, you know, when you saw the pictures, I mean, some, 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 the pictures of children because they are malnourished and they're kind of dying from hunger. So that also aches my conscience. And unfortunately, you know, world did not pay attention to what was going on in Yemen. So 
Uh, and then, you know, in my in some of my songs, I refer to Rohingyas because that's another tra tragedy, unfortunately, in Bangladesh. You know, there are that many children living in the camp conditions, and they have never seen outside worlds. And those those people, you know, are also growing there. I also actually wrote songs about East Turkistan as well. I have written two songs, oh. but they are not they're not published yet. So I mean I, I also did not turn a blind eye to what was going on in China. So I also wrote, you know, some songs uh, about East Turkistan as well. So I hope in a near future maybe they're going to appear in the social media as well. And of course Kashmir Kashmir, you know, in 2019, when I was checking the news, I already knew that there was a problem in Kashmir. But when I have noticed the special status of Kashmir was terminated, you know, it was abolished, I thought, you know, there is kind of imminent danger. So I felt that something, you know, something bad is happening. And I started following Kashmir closely. And then when I saw that, you know, like, almost 1 million Indian soldiers were sent to a small geography. So, and then I started hearing, unfortunately, bad news, you know, coming from Kashmir. And then I told myself, like, two guy, you need to do something, you know, about Kashmir. Before I have written also a song about Palestine, but for Palestine, you know, Pal Pal Palestinian issue is kind of, much more international. There are many human rights activists. So that's why, you know, there, there are also some songs about Palestine, but I didn't know that there was no international song about Kashmir. So there were some songs, but there was not one powerful international song. And then, uh, you know, I started thinking, who can sing this song? There was an American singer called Della Miles, and she was the vocalist of Michael Jackson and Whitney, Whitney Houston oh. in the past. Yeah. Then I heard that she settled down in Turkey. And I was kind of, because I also saw on TV, you know, yeah, she settled down in Turkey. And one day the destiny brought us together in an event where there were journalists. And I got, the, I seized the opportunity to approach her and I told her that, you know, I've got some song projects and I don't know whether you, you want to help me or not. And I mean, she was also concerned about humanitarian issues. And when she heard the story of Kashmir, she told me, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm eager to, to lend not only my voice, but I'll also give my heart. You know, when, when she saw the lyrics, she was also very sad. Then Kashmir is my name came. And because it was the first international song in the history of Kashmir, I never expected so much attention. I mean, I have written songs about many oppressed countries, but Kashmir is my name really went viral in a short time because for Kashmiri people, they felt so happy, you know. So somebody from Turkey, you know, making a song for them. And of course, an African-American lady singing the song, Kashmir is my name. Then, I mean, India was also kind of shocked because, you know, they thought there is a very big budget and maybe, you know, Turkey is kind of doing something against them. And Indian major TVs, you know, started making news. Like, what is Turkey doing to do? But actually, you know, it, it had nothing to do with government. As an individual, you know, I wanted to help, you know, Kashmiri people. And so just I wanted to raise their voice. So and we had really tiny budget and they thought that, you know, we are, do we are, we are doing this work maybe with a huge budget. But what I can say, I mean, so, as somebody dealing with music, you know, you can have a large orchestra, but if something does not come from heart, it does not reach heart. Like you say, what comes out of heart goes to heart. So our 
you know, biggest weapon was the hub because we really cared about what was going on because, you know, there were so many human rights violations. And the more I read, the more I learned the sad stories of half widows or fake encounters, young people just, you know, going to university, but unfortunately they didn't come back and they were murdered. And then some people claim that, you know, they were involved in a, in a battle or something like that. And then, you know, pellet guns. I mean, some people losing their eyesight. I mean, when I saw those, those pictures, I was really ashamed of myself as a human being. You know, why can't we, why can't we do something about those people? And why is the world turning a blind eye to this suffering, to what's going on in Kashmir? So, uh, I mean, after that song, normally when I write a song about a certain geography, maybe I write only one time, but for Kashmir it was different because I got so many messages and the people told me, please don't leave us alone. Maybe you don't know, but your songs, you know, give a message to Indian, you know, authorities. And uh, they're kind of being more careful with their actions. At least they know that somebody is monitoring. There are some artists and they are watching what's going on in, in Kashmir. So they got that kind of trust. I don't know. It was kind of weird for me. But, you know, they urged me to keep doing, you know, something for them. And then, you know, some other songs came. I also collaborated with Kashmir Sivita. So we uh, created one Turkish song with a famous Pakistani song uh, singer, Harika Kiani, and a Turkish singer. We brought them together. And they sang in Turkish, Urdu, and Kashmiri. Oh wow! Then we, yeah, that, that was that's also a very nice song. Then we made another song in Arabic, Arabic, Urdu, and Kashmiri. And then last year on fifth February, I am Kashmir came, and that was also very successful. My close friend who is living in Switzerland. He's a, a very good singer. I mean, while singing the song in the studio, he cried because, you know, he, 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 he felt the lyrics and he really, so I'm Kashmir also became very, very successful. And then the final song came about Said Ali Gilani because, you know, yes. Eman, at the age of 92, when he passed away, Unfortunately, even he, uh, Indian authorities did not let his family to have a proper burial. Yes. Then they wanted to snatch even his dead body. And that, that also affected me, you know, deeply. Then I also wrote one song on uh, Sayyid Ali Gilani. So totally five songs so far were written uh, about Kashmir. Yeah, that's 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 my story, Mary. Actually, ah, it's it's, it's fascinating. Um, I I'm not surprised that Kashmiris responded, and probably Pakistanis um, responded with great enthusiasm because they're uh, they're very um, very respectful and appreciative of solidarity. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about if you have any Mary. Stage. Yes. Sorry, before we go into the next question, could I just make a few comments and a wee discussion from yes. things that Turgay said there? Um, you know, it's funny when I'm listening then to somebody else, and I think Turgay also gives that, you know, there's a few thoughts in my head. One is that it builds the solidarity also. So for myself, you know, you're, the work that you're doing in your way, you know, I've the heart to heart thing that you talk about is that emotional connection that building of belief that somebody else shares that experience yeah. and this is how they're sharing for me that's looking for things to raise the voice in the western world it's that per, you know the perfect avenue that connects through songs so it builds that the other thing that i think we overlook that is really strong and powerful is the indian bjp government narrative is that everything's fine in kashmir 
There's nothing wrong in Kashmir. What's the matter with everybody? But you, not just you, you'll be the, me and Mary. You know, these the messages, the fact these you know, these messages are coming with the stories behind them and what we're seeing. So we ourselves become a vessel of evidence, as it were, that this, you know, they can't stay hidden because if it was just within the Indian narrative, we wouldn't be getting those messages coming through. So there's kind of different, there's so much, isn't there, to what's being done here and what's created. And again, and I really love, as you're saying, that the, the ethic in the, all the oppressed people, all of those that are suffering. And that's what I think, you know, and Mary and I talk about this a lot, that there's a lot of strength. We work in our different areas on the whole. We support one another, but there's Rohingyas, there's Palestine, there's, you know, Myanmar, there's Kashmir. If we all gradually, and this is something Mary had alluded to much before, the vision of like the Black Lives Matter movement where everybody comes together because of that same nature of the human rights. And there's you, that's there within your music. And so there's so much connectivity. You know, I just think it's fantastic. And and those were just a few thoughts that were going through my head as, as you were sharing things. I'm sure there was so much more, but I just wanted to put those angles on it as well. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Claire. I believe that you're also doing a great job, you know. So after I got, I, I became involved in the issue of Kashmir. I, I came to know Claire closely and what she's trying to do. So in the same way, Mary, I can say you're, you're also the conscience of the West. And I, I, I hope that, you know, uh, uh, there'll be more you know, kind of conscientious yeah. people are going to come about, you know, caring, uh, you know, about the tribulations, uh, the suffering of the oppressed people. Thank you. Could, could you tell us, have you, uh, I think both Claire and I have faced an extreme uh, backlash from, from people, from Hindu patrols, from people who you know, oppose the Kashmiri struggle. Have you gotten a lot of flack from from uh, from them on social media? I, I know I saw um, one of the websites put up a series of posts today um, denouncing you for maligning Indian security forces. And, and also they put up a post on um, YouTube. I wonder if you could talk, have you gotten a lot of yeah. From them. yeah. Actually, you know, unfortunately, I I got and after the first song "Kashmir is my name," when it became so popular, uh, you know, uh, India mobilized its own paid trolls to remove the song from YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, and they put a lot of pressure on YouTube. Just one day I saw that, I mean, it was not actually the of official video channel, but I saw like more than 230,000 dislikes in YouTube. And I, I was kind of surprised and thousands of comments. And then the next day, I believe this time Kashmiri people got mobilized and the same video, you know, only one video got more than... 340,000 likes and the video totally got like 49,000 comments. I mean, only one video and on Twitter, you know, that video, Kashmir is my name. You know, when we are making the clip, we are so careful not to put any image of violence because we know that, you know, children can also access. So, so that's why we, we are trying just to push really, you know, uh, sometimes we are trying to use some artistic ways to express the suffering as well. But unfortunately, despite that, you know, Twitter got a lot of pressure. And recently I also got an email from Twitter saying that, you know, uh, Indian government sent them a message and there is kind of, you know, something legal. So in the future, we don't know whether we can remove some of your tweets or or not. So yeah, they also send me you know that kind of letter. So 
And I don't understand, you know, like those people, those people are already being choked and their voice is being silent, uh, silence. And if we cannot use the social media for uh, expressing our own point of view, then what are we going to do, you know? Those people are going to die. They're going to lose their family members. And while dying, some people also want them to be silent. Like die, but die silently. Why? Because nobody should, should hear about what's going on here. So, uh, and, you know, the group that you mentioned, it's not the first time. Many times they, they put my pictures and you know they I, I i got some trash or you know this this kind of stuff so sometimes uh they say that like you know you're from turkey like why don't you mind your own business why are you getting interested in our own internal issue i mean we are we are one humanity so if something is happening here or there it is my duty as a human being just i cannot uh, confine myself to the borders of the countries because at the end of the day you know the color of our tears is the same so we're not different from each other of course as a human being if something bad is happening if there are some human rights violations it is my responsibility as a human being you know to to say something about that and especially those people, you know, when I talk to Kashmiri people, they told me that, you know, we are even afraid of retweeting your songs because we know that we are constantly being monitored and we can find ourselves in the jails. And actually now I'm working on a new song. And the last time one human rights activist sent me some pictures. And, uh, you know, now he is in 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 jail now i'm going to make uh, we're working on a new clip and we're going to be using some of his photos in the clip but now he's not free he's in jail and some journalists i know in Kashmir they are so careful about the wording about their own expressions but again those people you know those people are also put in jails and i mean Possibly you have also noticed so many people are d disappearing, you know. So some people tell me they don't know what's going to happen to them tomorrow or not. And, you know, again, another thing that I heard from Kashmir, they, they told me that almost in every household there is a murder. Almost in every family, you know, so there is somebody who lost his life or her life for the for the freedom struggle so that, that that's that's really too too bad you know so it's not very uh easy to live together with those realities because now imagine you're in Kashmir, but it is just a large jail you know so imagine that any moment you are being followed and there are already some soldiers you know uh and sometimes they they can come to your your house and they can check the books or what kind of materials you're doing they, they can get your mobile phone in such a country you already live in a constant fear yes. so that's why there are also many young people many young kashmiri people they told me that they they they, they want to you know they want to go to another country they want to establish their life in another country because they, they think that there is no future for them no you know? yeah so you see this 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 and it's thing. dangerous they could go to the market and not come back like you said they could go to the university and not return yeah you know anything can happen to them i also know some kashmiri people living outside so they have such a different psychology. I know some Kashmiri people living in Turkey or in Middle East. I can tell you they are still hiding their identity. Yes, and right. they are if they are concerned about their family. They say, you know, when they learn that, let's say, I tweeted against Indian government because they are doing, you know, something wrong, because they are they're they're getting involved in maybe massacre or murder. 
but still my family is going to get affected by my own actions so so that's why you know even when they live in other countries they don't have that kind of that that sense of freedom i mean still they control themselves they're under surveillance yeah so yeah so it, it is it is really you know interesting because uh i mean i saw some kashmiri people not only in turkey in europe as well one thing they are doing if they let's say i was in bosnia because you know there was uh cash uh, uh and uh, uh russell's uh you know tribunal yeah. on kashmir so there was one kashmiri brother with me and just when we landed in bosnia he saw the mountains and he said wow these mountains resemble the mountains of kashmir you know <laughs> but kashmir mountains are kind of you know higher than these mountains and i mean this brother i mean he was in jail and he left uh, he left uh, kashmir he was put in jail but because you know he was an important person and he has some relatives in america so america puts some pressure because some people came together with with some senators and then he left his own country and for those people there is no hope of returning so they live in a constant exile mm -hmm. you know yes. so so for some people imagine that it is such a bad feeling you know you are in a different country maybe you're a refugee or a citizen but there is no way that you can go back to your own country because the moment when you go to your country you know you're going to be arrested yes uh -huh. yeah so you see that this this that's another thing and unfortunately it's not only for the people living in kashmir but we also see that india also is trying to put pressure on some other governments because if there's some kashmiri people raising their voice for kashmiri people so we see that those people also become targets and sometimes you know india wants to get those people you know from from such governments as well so yes. uh, yeah that's why you know there is something big going on i mean mary you know what's happening on the ground when you see those families are crying and some people were killed in fake uh, encounters and those people you know they cannot even raise their voice because the world is deaf and blind and when you put yourself you know in the shoes of these people it is really you know such a big tragedy because something is happening but even nobody nobody cares because uh, you know those leaders i mean just you know th those powerful countries they are all going after you know their own business and because maybe they are making business with india and india is a yes. big market for them and unfortunately they don't say what's happening on the ground you know so so they don't see the tears of the mothers so they don't see the suffering of the young you know girls being being raped or i mean just when the program started just you saw that there was one kid you know sitting on the top of i don't know like yeah. it, uh -huh. of his know, grandfather yeah like that that picture if that picture did not move the conscience of mankind then what is going to move mm -hmm. right so uh and of course all these happening so to be honest the first time when i wrote kashmir is my name i didn't know so much suffering was going on in kashmir yeah i knew something and i wrote but after you write something you know uh then you become you become aware of the details and then of course sometimes you lose your peace of mind because even at night you know it comes to your mind and yeah. you don't know you what's going on yes. right yes. so yeah so this, very this, hard which story can i tell which pain here can I say every day mine is the same for my share you 
كشمير تنادي إخوتها تصرخ مثل فلسطين فلسطين في ترها تشيختها كوي هي جو سكي آسو كارو ناسمتها كشمير تنادي إخوتها تصرخ مثل فلسطين Um, 
I, I think it points to the silencing of Kashmiris, the fear that even those in diaspora can't speak. I think it, um, it, it emphasizes the importance of, uh, of the role of those of us who don't have relatives there, who can tell the truth, who can speak out. Could, could you talk about the role of what you think the role of sort of cultural activists are? There's many artists and um, yourself as a musician and others who use their art form um, to build solidarity. They've been really important and very appreciated by Kashmiris. Could you yeah. talk about that whole question? It's quite interesting. Yeah, you're right. I mean, some people can, can think like that, you know, what kind of difference can a song make, yes. right? So, I mean, okay, you're making a song, that's that's good. But what I can say, you know, uh, maybe the things do not change overnight, but when we think about our own childhood, while growing up, we listen to some melodies and those melodies shaped our character. So when you write a song, that song does not work only in a short time. Actually, it works in the long run. Because people listen to that song, that song becomes popular, and people, you know, decide not to give up. So they want to continue their, their own struggle. So that's why oppressors are always afraid of, of, the, of the songs or poetry and literature. Yeah. Why? Because the sovereignty of oppressors cannot last forever, but there are some songs, there are some poems, centuries pass, but we remember, you know, we remember those words, we remember these works. So these works last longer than the sovereignty of, you know, some oppressing people. Yes. And in the past, when, when we think about colonizers, for example, it is interesting when Egypt was colonized by the British Empire, the first thing British Empire did, you know, they would find storytellers and they would put them in jails. Why? Because storytellers remind the people something great about their history through the stories. So storytellers remind you, yeah, okay, today you're colonized, but actually in the past, you also created a civilization, you did something. So traditional songs, they reflect, you know, the identity, the collective identity of the people. And those songs give the people kind of self-confidence for the future as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why, you know, uh, I believe that art can play, uh, can, can play a liberating role in this kind of struggles and uh, you know stories so in the first place i'm a story writer and in many songs the key word is story so uh, when you check kashmir is my name i am kashmir you know because uh, for me a song actually is a story and that story reflects what Kashmiri people or Waj, Rohingya people or Waj, Yemeni people have experience in their lives. So I'm just trying to bring that story out, you know, for the conscience of mankind. Yes. And when, you know, Indian people, you know, ordinary people, when they listen to the song, actually they also feel something wrong is happening, you know. So the song also brings you, you know, kind of, you face also yourself. You encounter your own visage, you know, so you also see your own reflection in the in the mirror. So uh, that's why I believe, you know, uh, art could be really very effective. And there are already some uh, Kashmir brothers telling me that one day if we get free cashmere your songs are going to be remembered yes. <laughs> so, yes so i mean when i hear that of course I, I feel really very honored and sometimes a song does not get popular you know in the short run 
but maybe five years later you know more people hear yeah. and they remember they say oh you see i mean maybe we have we didn't pay enough attention to this song but look at this song so every song is uh every story every piece of literature is the witness to the to the history and for me as a human being you know i want to be recorded in the good side of history and i want to do my duty because you know i've got a conscience i'm i'm a human being so in the first place you know uh, as a muslim every time we say we've got this slogan we are brothers and sisters with all muslims in faith but we are also brothers and sisters with all humanity in creation yes uh -huh. you know so because we come i mean we believe we come from the same god so actually there is no difference between me and the other people yeah. and our prophet prophet muhammad peace be upon him he would tell i ask you uh, you know i ask two things from you only two things number one you know believe in god and number two love all humanity so i mean you know uh, so so that's why i believe you know uh, in the essence of uh, any religion whether it is hinduism or christianity or buddhism i don't believe you know there is this kind of you know vengeance or hatred against the other cultures but unfortunately the people sometimes are also exploiting religions for their own limited causes thank you that was very well said do you have anything that you wanted to talk about i'm sorry for my dogs here do you have anything <laughs> they're not very well trained what, 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 what is your dog's name <laughs> they're supporters of the kashmiri struggle really oh my god <laughs> they're, they're, they're bark, barking for kashmiri people <laughs> Yeah. Um, do I you mean, have anything you'd like to talk about? Yeah. We haven't. Um... Uh, yeah. I mean, as a final message, I want to say, uh, you know, oppression does not last forever. In the history, there were mighty countries. There were some superpowers. But, you know, when I was, you know, a child, we were talking about uh Soviet, so, uh, you know, Soviet socialist, even now I can't say, you know, its name. So it was a, a, one of the superpowers, but then it was disintegrated, right? So the same thing when America was in, in Afghanistan, nobody thought America would leave Afghanistan. But, but we saw that, you know, they were forced to leave. So uh, in the same way, you know, India, I believe that in this geography, in this geography, you know, we should learn the language of humanity and brotherhood. Yeah. You know, in this geography, India, Pakistan, uh, Bangla Bangladesh, Kashmir, all these countries can easily live in brotherhood, you know, and they've got enough sources and then all these countries could flourish a lot. Neighboring countries, Pakistan and India, they're not trading with each other, right? So they're not making business with each other. And India is trying to be used against China, unfortunately, by especially, you know, United States of America. And some people are also kind of eager to get roles imposed on them. But instead of this, they can say, you know, we live in this geography and we are neighbors. So in the past, we had a common history and still, you know, we can come together. And for Kashmiri people, they have been already promised the right of self-determination. So as Claire said, let, let, let Kashmir decide, right? I mean, so let's give the right to choose their own side whether you know they want to be together with india or they want to be together with with pakistan or they want to be independent i mean whatever they want let's hear the voice of kashmiri people and 
they have right because you know they lived in 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 that geography for several uh for several centuries and when you talk to kashmiri people they say you know kashmir existed much before than uh, india and even pakistan then let's give the right to kashmiri people to choose their own destiny to determine their own destiny and this is not that difficult and we cannot solve all our problems through weapons and and power because what we say might makes right but um, unfortunately you know oppression based on might is doomed to collapse one day i mean this yeah, that could be my final remark in in this topic so i hope kashmiri people are going to enjoy freedom that they have cherished one day they made a lot of sacrifices and hopefully one day you know they they're going to fulfill their dream thank you very much it was a uh, very very interesting thank you lovely to meet you yeah i was also happy to be your guest yeah thank you for inviting me you know to this program thank you you have anything claire to add button no only that was fantastic to listen to all that and you know the humanity element of this is what's so important hear. can you hear me now yeah yeah i can hear yeah can you hear i can't hear um yeah no thank you very much i mean i'm disappointed because i had a compilation of turgai songs that i was going to play and an upload of those and sadly i haven't been able to connect them up oh. so what I so but what they will be on my YouTube channel, which is Claire Bidwell, and obviously Turgai has all his songs on his YouTube channel. Yes. Is that under your name, Turgai? Just Turgai yes. Evan, and people will find you. Yes. Yeah, and they're, they're stunning songs, they're beautiful songs, and obviously it would have just added um, to, to this. What I'll do is I'll upload this program to my YouTube channel and I shall put the music onto the end of it. So that anyone watching from there, it will join on that way. So I think that's the way to do that. But no, Mary, I was and, just saying. And I'll post your music also. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was saying, Mary, about the humanitarian approach, you know, that feeling that that is that you know i'm familiar with that what's your business you know worry about what's going on in the uk you've got enough problems going on there but it is it's very much humanitarian and and as yeah. i often say it is personal because we're all human so i'm allowed to take it personally wherever yeah. it is whoever it is so um i can see there's a couple of comments i'm just trying to get onto those sadly the um I'm not, you know, uh, there's a lot of comments in here that aren't desirable. <laughs> and the That's thing expensive. is that, you know, do which could well be really positive. So I don't know what they are. So I apologize for some, for anybody that is posting up some nice relevant tweets and we're, uh, you know, I'm unable to interpret them and sadly can't risk <laughs> putting them up on the screen. Um, I think there's one there um that we can add up so it's somebody there saying thank you that's really interesting would have loved to hear some songs i am so so sorry i really am they were all here um and somebody else you know thank you so much for very oh, wrong one, very informative show so thank you for bringing your comments there somebody that spent some time in turkey saying what a beautiful country it is as well and i think we know how blessed we are don't we with where we are that it's part of the reason that we feel for other people that yes. are able to have this so once again thank you everybody thank you for listening and the songs they will be on claire bidwell on youtube and you'll find them on turgay evren's facebook page and youtube as well so if you can go and find the songs there and listen to them right now while we're in this conversation that would be wonderful um thank you for joining us we're getting closer to the 5th of february as well for our solidarity event where we're urging people to drink tea around the globe um, and then share your posts i have my nice new cup solidarity for Kashmir. So I shall be drinking out of that on the 5th. It's just, again, that solidarity, raising that awareness and something that we think people can gather around. So we also have a TikTok competition 
going on for anybody that wants to create a promotion for the tea day on TikTok with a hundred pound prize going there for the best one as well. So any way that we can to raise awareness. Um, Turgai's got his beautiful songs and we will hopefully have some interesting TikToks. <laughs> but I guess it's the same concept. All right, well, thank you very much. And it was lovely yeah, to speak with you. It was very yeah, interesting. I mean, it was my pleasure, you know, to be your guest. So thank you for hosting me again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for all your support. Because as Turgai said, you know, he and I met or came across, we haven't actually physically met, but we came across one another's work way back and were able to, to support that. And our paths have crossed a few times. And then, so it's been lovely to meet you and speak to you face to face. So. Yeah. Take care and um, hopefully we'll, we'll see you again soon. All the best. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Night, Mary. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Take care. You know what? Bye -bye. I'm sorry. I'm so, yeah, I'm so busy chatting away. I've forgotten to put up the end music again. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll just find that. Uh, good night, everybody. Thank you for, for tuning in. Yeah.